I found it funny when I was reading it because the Puritans in Massachusetts up that area, there's no Halloween because there was no fun. <laughs> there, there was, was no, fun. no fun. So <laughs> there, there. Well, they had Salem, didn't they? Well, that, that, that well, was that like was, the that Halloween capital for, of the world. That wasn't fun for the witches then. And, yeah. and graham crackers. And gra- yeah, crackers. graham crackers. Yeah. Those, you know, if if you floated, you were a witch. <laughs> that was the end of you. <laughs> Good day, you all, and welcome to episode 57, Halloween. I love Halloween. Do you I, love Halloween? Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I know Jeanette loves Halloween because we've been yeah, messaging she, she, each other yeah, with different ideas. It. And I used to get stuck with all the stuff at the old store when we used to do the Halloween, Halloween thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like There was times I couldn't go away with the hockey team and stuff like that because <laughs> I had to stay around for Halloween. Well, it's our, it's like... A good advertisement for USA Foods, because yeah, but I didn't need to be there. <laughs> but I had to be the major <laughs> master of ceremonies. Well, that's what you get for yeah. being the mayor of the neighborhood. Oh, I, know, I know. Um, now, Phil, do you know the original name of candy corn? Uh, something to do with dentist, dentist delight. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it should be. That's what it should be because after they eat all that candy corn, then they have to go back to the dentist. And next year, if they don't, then they look like one of those. Yeah. Things that they try to black out the teeth, that but actually a, they lose the teeth. You can yeah. actually, it's one of the few candies you can actually feel decay your teeth <laughs> as you're eating it. <laughs> but the original name was chicken feed. Chicken feed. Because that looked like uh, corn. Yeah. Get it. Get it, get uh, it. Okay, there you go. Learn something new See, every day. Well, we have to have a little bit of Halloween trivia. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what's going on with the house this year? Because you go all out. This is like, as you said, this is like your Christmas. This is my Christmas. Yeah. And you just go and is it you or Brendan? That- well, he actually quite enjoys it. So I did yeah. marry the right Australian because mm-hmm. he's right into it. Um, he does all the theatrics. Yes. So outside is his, inside is mine. Yep. Um, we have made a hanging ghost this year. So my paper mache glue recipe from third grade Sister Monica's art class still works. So she's flying around on a line and she's lit up at night, right? (laughs) We've got some hands coming out of um, a pallet. We've got a family of wrapped up dead bodies in black plastic with Mm. some buzzards picking at them. Yeah. And then every few days. I thought there were flamingos that were painted black. They were, but they now were. they're my buzzards. <laughs> and we'll be doing a few things over the next, you know, week or so to make it. We're just like drip feeding it because mm-hmm. people keep driving by and yelling, like, hey, when we're putting <laughs> things up. Now, it's when the kids start to want to walk on the other side of the street. I know we have reached the um, yeah. the level of where it should be and maybe just a little bit more. And, and also, Halloween makes it easy for me because I've been doing a local delivery show oh, lockdown time. Americans. <laughs> yeah, because when I go up to the house, I see the only house decorated. Oh, that's the house I got to go to. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's very handy like that. And actually, you kind of meet the Americans in the neighborhood. And I think I told the story last year, but if you haven't gone back. Actually, by the way, if you haven't listened to last year's Halloween, that was pretty good. You should give that a go. But um, there was a guy who's from Texas, and he lives a few blocks away. Yeah. And, you know, the house is scary. Brendan's at that year, I think he was green and bald in a suit. And um, he just told us, that it's like, come on, go up, get your kid, man up, get up to the door. <laughs> Because he's like, I don't want to go up. I don't want to go up. Uh, Maybe that's why we're all just a little bit different. I don't know. <laughs> we throw our children earlier into it. Yeah. Uh, now, now, we've got a bit of housekeeping mm-hmm. to go. So yeah. do you You want already to- got your broom out. <laughs> I do my witch's broom. Yeah. I'll fly her in later. So the secret code is going to work differently now. We use it. Um, you need to find your listener discount logo. You can search for that on site or mm-hmm. um, good day, you all discount. Yeah. And then those items will be discounted at the end. You pop that this code, which we're about to give you. Play ball. Which we don't care about anymore. I know. The Dodgers took over, uh, beating the Giants. Yeah. Well, you that was guys- very controversial. It was controversial. Even I was controversial about and, it. it and the like, New York Mutts, they were ahead <laughs> until like uh, you know, the All-Star break, and then they went down uh, the toilet. Do you know I found, so, I found out something so... And the Chankies <laughs> didn't make it neither. <laughs> I found something so tragic last night. What? My stepfather, who I adore, like I love Herman. Yeah, he's a Dodger fan. Ugh. He bleeds blue blood. Uh, I, you know, I 
switched my allegiance to UCLA for him, but uh, really, it's Dodgers. It's so disappointing. Maybe it's the same color. There's still people in, in Brooklyn that hate the Dodgers because they left. <laughs> I mean, they're 92 years old, but they still hate Yeah, it's all right. They keep uh, that keep that going. Yeah. <laughs> grudge is good now so this that's the code for october and we're going to update it monthly so that should be next week we'll have a new one for you yep and uh there you go okay so uh now if you want to get in touch with us don't forget it's podcast at usafoods.com.au that is correct and we've got a couple of emails to answer today as well and at the end of the show remember we're going to do the personal best product profile why does he have that's to be mine, so? Right? That's that, yes, that's yours, Phil. Oh, and the Ripper Recipe Roundup. I love that. I've, I've had you do that every week. It's so good. <laughs> Okay, so today's shows, what we're going to talk about, Barbara? We're going to cover a few things. We're going to cover just Celtic origins, just so we know the origins of Halloween and you don't just blame it on the good old U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, As we always get blamed we for. We do. And uh, Stingy Jack, I'll tell you about that. Stingy or Stinky? Stingy. Uh, it must have been his brother or his <laughs> cousin was Stinky Jack. <laughs> Uh, Brendan had a cousin with a nickname Stinky, didn't you? Yes. Ooh, for good reason, yeah. huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the her song, which we will revisit. Mm-hmm. Um, Cinderella and Pumpkins. It's not just a fairy tale. And then we're going to be talking more in depth on the ultimate Halloween candy, which is candy, candy corn. corn. And then the uh, pandemic of 1918. So there were Halloween rules back then as well. So mm-hmm. we're going to read those out. And um, haunting during the depression. Oh, and uh, then we'll give you also some uh, COVID safe ideas. Yeah, because we want to keep everyone as healthy as we can and make sure no mothers yell at us. So don't, don't know like, oh, how many hands have been in that yeah, bowl? Just put your mask back on. That's Which one? right. <laughs> Sanitize. That's it. Mask over your mask. Yeah. Okay. Fun fact. Yes. Number one, the National Confectionaries Association. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're associated, huh? They are. Has seen October 30th, the day before Halloween, as National Candy Corn Day. Why there not? You go. Why not? You have enough time to grab it and put some in some bowls you know, around the house. And then, you know, you always get all this candy. But then the day after, you go to uh, Walgreens or whatever, yeah. all the candy is like 50% off. I know. It's, and it's the same candy that you just buy with a different wrapper on it. <laughs> Don't taste any different. <laughs> I know. I I like a good sale candy. Yeah. Don't oh, give me well, that these uh, we can't eat these Reese's peanut butter cups because they're in the shape of a pumpkin anymore. You know. Now it's time to buy the Thanksgiving ones. We yeah. need turkey ones, and yeah. then we need the Christmas and go ones. And have price also. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Um, now, fun fact number two: the annual Greenwich Village Halloween par- parade, which started in 1974, mm-hmm. is the world's largest parade and America uh, Halloween parade, and America's only major nighttime parade, attracting more than 60,000 costumed participants. Two million spectators and a worldwide television audience. It's not on here on TV. No, no. Well, maybe so we can find worldwide. it. it's not worldwide. Well, maybe in some obscure countries. Yeah, you can find it. Yeah, probably New Zealand. New Zealand, yeah, yes. New Zealand. <laughs> Did I straighten that thing about the flag? <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> but did you see that they're missing that uh, New Zealand is not on some maps? Really, I saw Jacinda interviewed yeah. the other day, or as we and call it, her house it? Auntie Cindy. Oh. She is no, she goes, it's a real problem because she was laughing because someone said, "Oh, you are not on some. It's like Tasmania. You're not yeah. on some." She goes, "No, it's actually a real problem for <laughs> New Zealand." On so some, all the New Zealanders are getting lost on the way home. That's right? it. Yeah. It's like the <laughs> maybe that's what the Bermuda Triangle sort of thing. Yes. Ooh. Hmm. And fun fact number three, this is, uh, you know, we love this. Yeah. The pumpkin capital, or, well, let me just say that the self-proclaimed pumpkin capital of the world Mm. is Morton, Illinois, which is the home of whom? Libby. Yeah, that's it. So, but now if they were in Australia, because Mm. over here you got the the big sheep and the big banana. (laughs) That's right. So- do you go to Morton, Illinois, and they got the big pumpkin? You should, or big can of pumpkin. Big can of pumpkin. <laughs> the recipe you can finally read on the back without your glasses. Yeah, probably they don't. <laughs> and also, pumpkin, I think it's going to be really short supply this year. So, everybody, look in your closets, in your pantries. I know you got a can in there buried for somewhere. Emergencies. Yes, mm-hmm. and get it out. Yes. Um, and if you don't use it all, 
If you have one of the big ones and you yeah. only just freeze the other half, mm-hmm. just in case. And make popsicles. That's it. All right. So we're going to take our first pause with our musical break. Ah! And we're back. That we are, Phil. So we're now going to take the blame off of us. That's right. And give it to the Celtic, the Irish. That's right. So yes. we're going to talk about the origins. So Halloween activities. So these all have um, their roots in mm-hmm. these origins. So Halloween activities include trick or treating, or there was before that in some areas of the UK it was called guising or souling. Um, attending Halloween costume parties, carving pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns, lighting bonfires, apple bobbing, divination games, playing pranks, visiting haunted attractions, telling scary stories, as well as watching horror films. We watched the original Halloween last night. Yeah. And it was very, Brenda didn't like it, still scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> so um, in many parts of the world, um, Christian religious um uh, well, we have yeah, all, all Hallows Eve, so yeah. the, and that's All Saints Day is the next day. Yeah. So, all these things that religion has um, kind of picked up pagan dates, mm-hmm. and so um, I think it's Sahame is what the Celts called it, um, which was a harvest festival, basically. Yeah, and the Mexicans that's how they did all the things. When you look at all the artifacts that are just the skulls and I've all that, I've got some over there. Yeah, Dia de la Muerte, yeah, day, day of the Dead, Day of the Dead. I probably sounds said like a right. movie. Well. There probably wasn't. <laughs> so now I was reading up on this and I quite like souling um, the story of it because yeah. you get a cake. You make special soul souling cakes. Souling cakes. So it's like a shortbread. Mm-hmm. But what you do is traditionally um, you get a hollowed out. So this is in um, the UK. So you get a hollowed out turnip or potato. Yeah. Well, pumpkins didn't grow well there, so you got to no. have something, right? And and it's a little lantern, and they look scary as all hell. And you dressed in a white cape, and you knocked on doors, and for a soul cake, you would um, sing and pray for the souls of the people in the house. Wow. So that's how that all started. Mm. Um, and the masquerading came about to imitate the uh, saints and the, and the spirits. That's right, because... It goes from sort of doing a good deed and praying for you for the people who have given you food mm-hmm. to scaring off the evil spirits because tradition has it that night of Halloween is um, when the veil is thinnest. So that's why often people go to um, they pr- reserve uh, sorry observe All Hallows Eve and they end up at the graves of their dead. So remaining. Um, remaining bit with there all night having a little party and that's like Dia de la Morte. And it didn't start in America till like the um, in the nineteenth century when all the Irish and Scottish immigrants, you know, became a major yeah. you know, holiday in America because of uh yeah, again the Celtic roots. Yeah, and that was their traditions. Mm-hmm. But I found it funny when I was reading it, because the Puritans in so Massachusetts up that area, there's no Halloween because there was no fun. <laughs> there, there was, was no, no fun. fun. So <laughs> there, there Well they had Salem, didn't they? Well, that, well, that, well, that was, was like the Halloween capital for, of the world. That wasn't fun for the witches then. And, yeah. and graham crackers. And gra- yeah, crackers. graham crackers. Yeah. Because, you know, if if you floated, you were a witch. <laughs> that was into you. Know. And Let's if, see if she burns. If she doesn't yeah, burn, she's a witch. witch. Yeah. Oh, well, too bad. Yeah. Yes. So, um, also, it, the thing about it, this, it's kind of like Thanksgiving in a way. Everyone celebrates it. Yeah. So That's yeah, true. I mean, in yeah. America, for the people... That are Australian and haven't been to America that might yeah. be listening to the show. When you go to America, like on Halloween, everybody, no matter where you go, from the bank to yep. Walmart, it doesn't make any difference. Everybody is dressed up. And if you're working, like I used to work down in Lower Manhattan, you know, in the, in the financial district, it was just another way to just. Go, it was a fun day at so work. Let's go drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember wearing my. Oh, I'll have the Bloody Mary today. That's yes. right. I went as um. I wore my school uniform that has an exchange as an exchange student here to yeah. work, and they're like, they made you wear that for real. It's not just a Halloween costume. <laughs> yeah. And actually, and in Cajun areas, so they like having a party in the South. Then hmm. um, they would have a nocturnal mass that was said in cemeteries on Halloween night. Um, candles that had been blessed were placed on graves, and families sometimes spent the entire evening. 
probably drinking. Yeah. Well, you would be. Right. Why would you? I could never do that. Well, you know, look it up because um, for in Mexico, when people go to the cemeteries, mm. it's all lit up. It is a party. Like yeah. you know, there's music. There's all the candles everywhere, and you know, it's at least a happy they remember place. there. That's mm, right. Dad, yes. You know, I love that. So, like for my dad, if I could find a big jug of Ernest and Julio Gallo wine. <laughs> I think I'd we could that. find that, yeah. We could take that to the cemetery, except I, I don't think he's not in one. He's just wandering around. Dad. Just, okay. <laughs> so, and now we get to Stingy. Stingy I mean, Jack. On, I'm thinking always stinky, but anyway, I know, Stingy Jack. I, th- I saw that. I but if saw it wasn't for too. him, we wouldn't have the Jack O'Lantern. Yes. So what I think I'll do, do you want me to read out the beginning or would no, you yeah, like to do the, no, the, so, the tale? Yeah, the tale. Now, tell the wags the dog. Or is <laughs> That's that right. Dog? The dog yeah. has just jumped up on me. No. Okay, so the term jack o' lantern comes from an old Irish folk tale called Stingy Jack. Now, I love old Irish folk tales. They always involve the devil and drinking in some sort. Legend has it that Jack invited the devil himself to have a drink with him. The thing is, Jack wasn't called stingy for no good reason. Jack wanted to get away with a free drink, so he tricked the devil into picking up his bar tab. Something like I would do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I keep my hands in my Flash. pocket. That's yeah. right. I'm not the best, yeah. yeah, he always has to go yeah. to the bathroom. Uh, at the same yeah, time. and also, like, whoever buys the first, you never want to buy the first round. <laughs> no. That's the most expensive that round. Is exactly. And then after that, People, Pete, oh, no, I, I already I have one. I'm still working on this one. Okay, so instead of six <laughs> drinks, I only have to buy four. You know? okay. And then if you get to down to the third round, uh, who went? Um, two, mine and then somebody okay. else's. Yeah. Right, yeah. okay. Stingy Phil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, at, but the devil, he waits. After Jack passed away, he was prevented from moving on to the afterlife as punishment. Seems like the big guy upstairs didn't want him either. Jack was cursed to eternally wander the earth in the dead of night with only a single coal ember to guide him. Jack would place his light in a hollowed out turnip. And from that point onward, people began to call him Jack of the Lantern Ooh. or Jack the Lantern for, for sure. short. Mm. That's right. So in reverence for that. That is uh, why people oh. walked around with jack o' lanterns, and they carved it out to make it look like him. That's so right. So he had no teeth. <laughs> well, it was before modern dentistry. I'm yeah. I'm guessing, and um, it was also to keep Jack away by lighting the way for good spirits. Yeah. Pumpkins, um, so it was turnips and potatoes. And then when people came to the U.S., pumpkins were so much easier to carve, as we all well, can imagine. Bigger than a turnip. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but the turnips are so ugly. I want to find a big giant turnip and try that if you just carve through the bat. Well, if you can't find a turnip, you can find what uh, other root vegetables like rutabaga. Oh, rutabaga. Swede. Uh, it's a rutabaga. Oh, okay. Well, and then you got the other thing um, uh, the cell rack. Oh, that would be that, excellent. Because yeah, that's, they use some of them. And then you can make soup out of what you got, what yeah. you got left. Or you just smash it up in like potatoes. That is very true. Uh, so uh, the origin of com, uh, carvings yep. was meant to deter away, as you said, uh, Jack from the you know away Jack from the homesteads. And after um, you know the Irish that came here into yep. America, they found that the pumpkins, of course, made the inch because it was big and fat and yes. easy to do. Scary too. Yeah. Um, and it probably looked like somebody's <laughs> mother-in-law or something. <laughs> And the traditional lighting, the way for spirits, also carried over, and that's why pumpkins are associated with Halloween. Mm. Now you can see them everywhere during October, and now we have tea lights and the electric or our battery lights, so you don't have that, sm- you know, that smell of singed oh, pumpkin. Yeah. And then the next day, that smell of rotting yeah, singed pumpkin. <laughs> uh, I was never one to carve out a pumpkin because it never worked for me, and I don't know. And it was just like I don't. We just never did it. Uh, I might see dad. I know that after the day of uh, Halloween, yeah, you know, most anybody had a real pumpkin that was on a you know table somewhere, you know, outside the house was bashed. Tough neighborhood, tough neighborhood you were in. No, um, yeah, so my dad, I had a very nice memory, although it probably wasn't nice for mom because our mom and dad weren't were separated at the time yeah. and dad came over to carve a pumpkin with me and i remember he was in his suit for work mm-hmm. and he put his tie like around his neck and he let, and i i'm glad she wasn't watching because i he let me handle the big giant 
yeah. knife. And the sound oh. of the the sound of the spoon scraping out the seeds, like oh, just so oh. gooey. It's sort of gross, but yeah. Yeah, and then you know it reminded me, you know, like the uh, with the tea candles and all that. In, oh yeah, yeah. In Wilmette, Illinois, yeah, a suburb of a nice suburb, very nice. It's like a type of area where you could only buy the house because your parents died. And oh, you, you got lucky that. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's so people that are familiar with the Chicago area know Wilmette. Yep beautiful area so what they do they people get paper bags and they put tea candles in oh. and line them up and down their their driveways that is beautiful and you drive down and it's and what's nice is you know it's dark at five o'clock there now. yes i know so i have half of our things it's only the uh, older teenagers and grown-ups will say because at night yeah. it's a bit nutty but mm-hmm. during, yeah i'm that's one of the things i do miss is daylight savings halloween yeah. or having the opposite of now, all right now we get to the her song, now, Rusty Cage or Holly Poe? I think we're going to be playing the Harley Poe version. The Holly Poe version? Yes. The week, the worms crawl in, the worms crawl out, the worms play pinochle on your snout. They eat your eyes, they eat your nose, they eat the jelly between your toes. Oh, that sounds That's good. Okay. And do you know what's even nicer about that? My mother and I both have memories of my grandpa singing it to us. <laughs> I think people with foot fetishes get turned on by that well, song. They the could. jelly between your the toes. toes. I can see them uh, I don't going know. off on that. Well, now, it, the only, you know, like the other than the, like the Phantom of the Opera and all yeah. that, the only other ones I remember was like the Monster Mash. Oh, yeah. He did, that, he did the, the Monster, Monster Mash. <laughs> yes, yeah. we, we get that. We usually play that at work. Yeah. We need and to find it. Remember, we had Elvira? You would know it. Oh, uh, yeah, I know Elvira. I used California. to watch Elvira. I think she still looks the same. She's she pretty well does. preserved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think she's sucking down some formaldehyde. She's <laughs> yeah. looking awesome at 70 and then, something. Uh, in New York, we had Zachary. So, oh. Zachary was his, that was his real name. His name was something Zachary. Right. You know, uh, or maybe Zachary Fox or something like that. So he would come on. He had his show on every week that would do like horror stories and all that. And he would be like the presenter and all that yep. and dress, you know, to the part. And then he went from that to being on a, a progressive radio station, WPLJ. Right. Playing rock music. <laughs> we had Bob Wilkins. And he used to host Creature Features. Ooh, Creature Features. And I think it was Channel 44, if I remember. And they had all the, um, you know, the 70s sort of, you know, like Blackula. And yeah. they had like, oh, all, like Christopher Lee being Dracula, Dracula yeah. with all the women floating around him. And um, I, he was just this blonde guy with glasses, big cigar. Uh-huh. And my mother, I think, was afraid to stay up watching it by herself so i used to keep her company and maybe this is why i feel the way i do about halloween but mm-hmm. i saw all of the good stuff like that it was i think it started at like 11 o'clock at night it was fantastic anyone from the bay area might remember bob wilkins and yeah. creature features okay so we got all that song and now we got uh you know the people singing i'm sure there's uh, probably dozens of other songs oh. for, for halloween that you use because it used to be a lot well, less commercial. Well, yeah, less used commercial. To, everything used to be yeah. less commercial. But it used to be a lot creepier. Like it was really right in your face, rotting bodies, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then we all got like a little bit nicer. And yeah. you could dress as a princess in Cinderella rather than oh, yeah, a frightening exactly, yeah. like cloth masks like mm-hmm. from the 1800s. Jeez. Don't know how anyone got through that. Uh, but now, so we've got the scary bit, but a little bit of pumpkin trivia. Mm-hmm. So Cinderella and her pumpkin carriage, or Kath and Kim, where she had her pumpkin carriage for her wedding. <laughs> um, so the story, so in Cinderella with that, there's the first time the word pumpkin was actually used in literature because a French explorer, Jacques Cartier, in 1584, Sold pumpkins. He caught, even though they were brought back originally uh, from, I think Columbus and some other explorers brought them back. He called them gross melons, so big melons, which translated to pompions in English, which then became pumpkin. So the first time he it was used in literature was for Cinderella. Cinderella. Very non-Halloween. Oh well, there's there's no witch, but there's an evil stepmother and. Maybe cranky kings and queens, but no, no, not really. Scary. All right, now we get into candy corn <sighs> and the ma- origins. Now, the largest manufacturer of candy corn, yes, is Brax. That is right. Okay. 
So here's a story about Brax. Tell you me. hear me talking about Dino mm-hmm. in Chicago and Dino Sorokides. Now, he lived on the same block right. as the Brax family. Ooh, that is a handy connection. Yep. Okay, so then Glenville, Illinois. And again, uh, people that listen to know the Chicago area, know Glenville, very up city area, beautiful country club there. Which Actually, of course, Dino my was. friend lived in Glenville. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so down the block was the Brax family. And Lady Brax, or the daughters, one of them mm-hmm. went missing, never got found. I never knew that. Yeah. It's the mystery of the Brax. Yeah, you could Google it. Oh, I will, because yeah. I'm a little bit of it. Well, maybe it was Walgreens, because Walgreens was on his block also. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it was Brax. Oh, their house yeah. would be very good at Halloween. Yeah. That would be the place. Well, all that's, yeah, that house there. Yeah, but, you know, uh, before Dino stayed there uh, forever, you know, until he passed away, but he had like one of the oldest houses there. All the other ones were, you know, eventually people move out and then they got bulldozed. And then, of course, then they did the Mac Mansions. Yeah. You know, yeah. You but he had a beautiful that. property and it wasn't huge. But in the backyard, you sit in the Florida room. And uh, I remember sitting there when the snow was coming down and he backed up to the forest uh, reserve mm. oh. and the deer would come up. Oh, oh how just, nice. Oh, just beautiful. Yeah. It's like in movies that I would mm-hmm. have seen. Um, I My only connection to the Brooks Corporation is Christina Schleier, who came to our school in grade three and her dad was a rip. <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted to be friends with Chrissy that because she had them. She had Mars bars and all the other good stuff. So they make... Uh, Approximately seven billion pieces of candy corn, Jeez. and that possesses eighty-five percent of the total share of can- in the candy corn. And that's pretty hard to believe, you know. That's that they have eighty-five percent. Well, we buy from Zachary's yes. in Indiana, and they they're all over. I mean, was, yeah, you know, they're, they're huge, and they make a lot of different products for. And that's but maybe maybe you see like. Brax at the grocery store and at Walgreens and things. Maybe yeah. Zachary's is more, I don't know, but Zachary's is yummy. Mm. And, um, and it's still made in America where Brax is not anymore. Oh, well, there you go. Made South of the border. That's right. Now, it, so candy corn or chicken feed was first invented in the 1880s. So what they did is they had the buttercream sort of candies and they molded them into different nature shapes so Mm -hmm. it sort of went with harvesting and farming and stuff including chestnuts and turnips and clover leaves but candy corn became the popular one because it had the different the different colors in it for the tri-layering so and all the different colors were really disappointing because it they all you know, tasted the same. The same. You want to get that little chocolate bit? No, don't take like chocolate and the orange bit. I no. know. I well, look. Guess probably, food coloring has no taste. That's right. Probably much like a Twinkie, candy corn. Yep. Once a year, I still try it. Yep. Right, because I think I'm gonna like it, and it just. <laughs> Never, I just, I decorate with it, but I don't really eat it as much as I should. Mm. Um, But they do have, so in the 1950s, people began to hand out individually wrapped candy for trick-or-treaters. So candy corn started coming in those little, we had the little, some of the little packs. And um, they also had harvest corn, which adds cocoa powder, which features a chocolate brown white end, but it doesn't. It still, still just tastes taste, like wax. Exactly. It just doesn't, no, that's, that's like when people go, it tastes waxy. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but see, like, I remember when I was a kid in the Bronx, when we used to go trick-or-treating. Mm-hmm. Okay. There was no, nothing was wrapped. No, we used to get like, the only thing I got wrapped was like a homemade popcorn ball and say, saran your, your wrap, old, you know. Your, your father <laughs> yeah. got wrapped. Uh, yeah. But he don't hope so light. <laughs> Between, yeah, that's right. And my mother would, uh, my mother would go through and just take all the Snickers out because they didn't look right. Yeah. And uh, they weren't wrapped well but enough. we didn't get anything. Maybe lollipops were about the only thing. We never got candy bars. We never got, you know, people didn't have the money to buy that stuff. No, you and, they, like- and they weren't being made in the little fun sizes back then. No. You know, there was, you still have to buy a whole bar. And who's going to give you a bar for a nickel? Well, two people on the street I used to live on. Hmm. Um, but one, I went to jail for his crimes, but he had whole candy bars at his house and a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> he was just investing. But the in best thing was also when, you know, like you get later in the afternoon or the night and you're still trick or treating because you, you, you load up your bag, you go home, you get something to eat, maybe you dump yeah. your bag out and then go you back out again. Fresh bag. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's nice when you get later because when they run out of candy. Money. They you get money, you know, a lot of pennies, 
Oh, once in a while, you get a nickel or a dime when they run out of pennies, you know, but the pennies were always the first thing. <laughs> I remember rolling up the pennies. <laughs> oh, all right. Yes, I do remember some of that. Now, the funny thing is, so now we're talking how it tastes like wax. Like, really, it does. But candy corn-flavored snacks have become really popular. So we're getting things like um, candy corn Oreos and yeah. M&Ms and marshmallows. Yeah, I think they're just colored orange and stuff. Yeah, I think it's more like a vanilla cream sort well, of this, flavor. Well, this year's Oreos are uh, just the... Uh, there's five different designs, all yep. done with different jack-o'-lanterns on it, and with oh. orange filling in the middle. That's, so it looks. That's all you need. It's just so they just festive. came in yesterday. <gasps> Ooh, when did there be any left by Monday? Uh, there should be. We got quite a bit. I wonder mm-hmm. if any next week's paycheck will be left by the time <laughs> I get through stuff on Monday. <laughs> well, we just had uh, uh, for this. I brought up one of the other new things, and this is very limited. <laughs> so it's only a little bit on the internet and a little bit. And probably by the time you listen to it, it's all gone. Uh, pumpkin cheesecake, soft baked Petrus Farm. Oh, the there's cookies. nothing like a Pepperidge Farm cookie. Yeah. Oh, tastes like home. What was that? The, the little tagline uh, with Petrus Farm? Oh, I can't. Oh, my gosh. I can't remember. Yeah, it's something about uh, oh, some old guy used to always say it. I'll find it. Yes. I'll find it when we can when we come back later on. Now, in a poll of thirty thousand consumers on mycandystore.com, dot com, mm. candy corn was rated the worst Halloween candy yeah. of two thousand and nineteen, knocking down the rather unfortunate circus peanuts down a notch. Now that's an abomination. Circus. I just peanuts. ordered those. Oh my god! Because you remember, them. yeah. I mean, they look good. I they mean, do they look taste good. good as soon as you bite into them, and that's it. <laughs> Oh. Then it just turns into like melted sugar in your mouth because it's soft. Yeah, it reminds me of the candied banana lollies. Yeah, here. same thing. Only thing yeah. these uh, these were orange. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Get the dog out of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> now I'll no, just I'm say, being licked over here. Oh Sorry. my god, Brendan, control. I got, I got, uh, oh, he's got him. Okay, now. Uh, also, I love this. I love, you know, Lewis Black. I love that comedian. Anyway, so according to comedian Lewis Black, candy corn, quote, tastes like something that was made out of oil, which if melted down could run a car. Mm. And uh, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> yeah, like how he put it, earwax formed in the shape of a <laughs> rotten tooth. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it. Yeah, for people from Michigan, I think this is funny. Someone from Michigan was really bummed about this. Yeah. The Detroit Free Press. Uh, the treat that took home second place as, mis- as Michigan's most favorite Halloween candy, candy corn. And residents were not happy. It may be a new year, but some things never change, wrote Brian Manzullo in the Detroit Free Press. Unfortunately, that includes Michigan's taste in garbage candy corn. Yeah. <laughs> oh. If it actually looks like corn. If you stack it up, like 20 yeah. sides in, it looks like a corn cob. Well, no, it's supposed to, you know. And it just Well, that took that seemed like that should take more that took more thought than it should have. Mm-hmm. Like as in what but it's a or maybe it's a yeah. maybe it's a happy accident like we talked about last time. And there's a proper way to eat it. Oh, well, not really, but many people believe that candy corn like Oreos should be yeah. eaten like we were just talking about. You know, nibble from a certain in a certain manner. You know, the <laughs> bottom or the white, the dark, the chocolate, or whatever. Again, it all just takes the same. But uh, <laughs> how many people? Forty three percent eat the narrow white end first. I personally just shove the whole thing in my mouth because it's not very big. That's the ten percent. <laughs> <laughs> You're the true renegade. Oh, that's me. Yeah. That's yeah. me. But you know me, and uh, this made me think of um, the Oreos, uh, the deep frying them. You, I saw a recipe for deep frying candy corn, and you'd have you, you get <laughs> crescent dough. Yeah. Right. So they have seamless crescent dough, which I didn't know, but crescent dough. You cut out little circles. You put three in, and mm. you squish them up, oh. and then you. Fry the heck out of them and put some powdered sugar on it just to make it that much yeah, sweeter. Just, yeah, but you, you got to kill the taste. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. The oil sort of sucks it out. I possibly would try them like that, but yeah. really, I'll, I don't think and so. And they also do beer out of it. Uh, like, so in Wisconsin, they made uh, candy corn ale. Okay, brewed, and, brewed to smell and taste like candy corn. Like, why? <laughs> Well, we have a local brewery, and yeah. they do a s'mores beer mm. and a tiramisu beer. 
The, it's not bad. The s'mores is like a little bit marshmallow. I, I'm still trying to get over the idea of people putting oranges in their beer. Oranges? Yeah, the the, the uh, Belgian beer. Right. You know, Blue Moon or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, they put a a half of an orange into it. You know, like instead of putting a lime, they use an orange. Right. That's... If I want fruit, I'll have a fruit you salad. Have fruit... <laughs> that's not for your beer. Yeah. All right, that's all right. You have a margarita that has a lime on lime the side it. of yeah, it. Yeah, if something. I want to get rid of scurvy. Yes. Now, I like... A good old American marketing ingenuity, Phil. Mm -hmm. It's not just for Halloween candy corn. Nope. So we have Indian corn, which is has a brown end instead of yellow for Thanksgiving. We've got reindeer corn, yeah, red, red and green. Cupid corn. <laughs> for Valentine's uh, Day. Don't, just a heads up, people. Don't give your sweetheart <laughs> that for Valentine's Day, really. Bunny corn for Easter. Yeah. And... God bless it. Freedom corn, red, red white, and blue. blue. Yeah, got to keep those machines going all year <laughs> round. That is right. Uh, well, you thought you hated it before, you hate it now. You can hate it all, all year, year long. Yeah. That's right. All right. So let's get into the uh, last pandemic before this one. Yeah. So 1918. Not many of us how will did, be remembering that. How did they get out of it? Because they didn't have any, they just died everybody off. Well, they didn't have as many people. And yeah. then people died off. Like, and they didn't you know, travel. And they didn't travel. So, you know, a lot of it was brought over from Europe. On the boats. Mm -hmm. um, we have an issue again, yep. sir. How is he getting up here? The dog, the the dog wants to be part of the show. Yeah. Oh, All he's right. just laying down. Okay. We'll ignore You'll him. You'll have to put the picture up of Ralphie onto the internet so people could see what he looks like. Oh, well, we will do that. We'll do that next week. It must be good right next to the microphone. <laughs> So in the 1918 pandemic, now you got to think it's sort of a different era. The kids were a little bit more naughty. Mm -hmm. The adults sort of had different sort of like different parties for Halloween. So this is actually some of the things from um, the newspapers back then. So witches must beware, declared the Baltimore American October 31st, 1918. The Maryland City Health Commissioner had placed a ban on public Halloween events, instructing the police chief to prevent people from holding carnivals and other forms of public celebration. So as they were in the midst of the second and most deadly wave of the flu pandemic, Spanish flu, and that meant they had to curtail the usual Halloween revelry. During the pandemic, cities um, discouraged traditions to reduce transmission of the virus, sounding all very familiar. Mm -hmm. Respectful of those, uh, actually, this is a different take that we haven't taken. So respectful of those that might be sick or, or have lost loved ones. So don't be an idiot in the street pounding a drum because people might not be well inside. And they also told kids, do not told parents to tell their kids not to do the pranks at the, or be loud and rowdy. Um, but I think <laughs> at, at the bottom, I'm just going to jump to this because yeah. influenza bans seemed, um, seemingly did not blight young America's observance in St. Louis. The Post-Dispatch reported, the police reported the usual number of streetlights extinguished and the usual number of bread boxes overturned. Wow. <laughs> Those hoodlums. And they also, we even have a flu, a, a mask issue. You know how we have... You know, put your mask on, don't wear yeah. your mask, right? All that. So in Spokane, Washington, police were supposed to take away Halloween masks if they saw people out wearing them while wearing cloth flu prevention masks. They were encouraged or mandated in some states. But the problem with the Halloween mask is that people would share them. So they were going uh, to be spreading it. So there you go. It's uh, what's old is new again. All is new. And then we get into the, another happy time of American history. Yeah. <laughs> the Great Depression. The Great Depression. I think we're in that now. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, that's a good thing about studying history. It repeats itself. So yeah. at least you But can... this is a different type of depression. Yes, this is a different Mental type. Mental depression? Yes. Was... <laughs> yeah. Well, this had both. So, um, you know, boys, blowing off steam, yeah. as I said. What are some of the tricks you got up to, Phil? Not that you were in the Depression, but- uh, None. What's the worst thing uh, your friends ever, someone you know has done? Well, the only thing that we got into, we used to do the things with the socks with the chalk. Oh, yeah. So we bought the street chalk the, for, I think, three for a nickel, yep. or something like that. And then you put it into an old sock, and then you let the cars run over it a few times, and you keep on bashing <laughs> it. So it comes into a powder, and then, you you know, because, you know, especially when it's cold. Right. You hit somebody in the leg with it, but everything you hit turns into this big glob of chalk color. <laughs> 
<laughs> which is harmless because it, you know when it rains if it's all over the street or whatever it when it goes. rains it just goes away you know and it washes off your clothes the only thing you got these big blotches on your leg from when your friends are hitting you off the head with it. Hematomas. Well, the thing is, in the olden days, so coming to the Depression, there were some some very dangerous pranks, like, you know, teenage boys flipping over cars, sawed off telephone poles, and um, other acts of vandalism, including stealing neighbors' gates off their hinges, (laughs) and... Stealing dead bodies. Oh, yeah. that's getting to you serious. Yeah, that's getting serious. Yes. So they didn't even do that in the Bronx. I mean, the, the most mischief people got into were throwing eggs at things. Yes. That, well, and that's shaving cream. Well, I think sometimes these are, you know, people out in the country and there's not much to do there yeah. in the best of times. Sometimes yeah, they throw it at the buses as they go by. And then you get on the bus the next day or whatever and it stinks. Because <laughs> of the end. Went through the window. Yeah. So, yes, at, like in 1879. So this is way before that. The Kentucky a Kentucky train was stopped by two hundred boys laying fake stuffed body across the railroad track. And in the nineteen hundred, the University of Michigan, some students there stole a headless corpse from the anatomy lab and propped it against the building's front doors. So uh, what's happened in the end? So during the Depression, this was going on as well. So rather than banning the holiday and making things even more depressing, they um, made haunted houses and events for things to go to. So you're going to get scare the crap out of each other. Yeah. Go there. Which is what Sean did. Remember? Yes. He talked about that. Yeah. A year ago. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he's been to the he one over in uh, that they did in St. Kilda. St. Kilda, that's right. And hopefully, not this year, but maybe next year. He'll maybe. Be back. Well, you never know. Mm. But yes, the thing is, oh, there's old haunted houses. They used to touch you in those. I hated mm. that. I was too so talking. I was talking to Anna about that because she went yeah. to one once. I was we like, used to invent our own. It wasn't even yeah. Halloween. We used to get the young kids, right? Yeah. And we lived in, uh, in Brooklyn at the time. So you have the apartment houses, and of course, the apartment house, you had the access to get to the back of the apartment house, and they had like a little concrete backyard. <clears throat> but, so you go down to the cellar area where the furnace was yep. and all that. Most of the time, it was open. It should have been locked because people threw their garbage and all that down there, and they had all the stray cats live down there and, and stuff. <laughs> well, we used to have people in the neighborhood that would make their own, like you well, had to get through well, in the house. We, yeah. well, well, that's what yeah. we did. So we used to get like old... Uh, Strollers or right. uh, what do you call it, trams and stuff, yeah, where yeah. you put little Pramp, babies yep. in, yeah, and get like the little kids and put them in there and run with them and like try to scare them and go <laughs> quick. And, yeah, we didn't lose any, I, no, well, that's know, good. Yeah, nobody was, broke anything, it like obvious, their legs or obviously whatever. the day before you needed insurance for things like yeah. that. That's it took the fun away from everything. Now, we'll move on to a little things like this year if you're giving out um, candy, and we had to do this last year as well, some COVID safe ideas. So whether you're in lockdown or out of lockdown, it's just better to be safe. Mm -hmm. So um, what we did last year is we had individually sort of wrapped candies. So for example, just, you know, pieces, and we put them on a table at the front. So the kids came up, we had the table between us, so we had the 1.5, and they got to pick you know, what they wanted and we just kept refilling it and that way they could still Yeah, because have if it. you just leave it out there, it's gone with the yeah, no first two kids that go by. I've had to do that occasionally and mm. I've always I always knew what was happening. It was backing out of the driveway. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. So safe candy giving, mm-hmm. you know, so that's that's what you're saying there and everything wrapped up. But I mean that wrapped candy as came about probably what in the seventies. Yes. You know, everything had to be wrapped before that, as I said, you know, like when I was a little kid, uh, nothing was wrapped. I mean, People giving us pieces of cake. Yes, yes. I remember getting jelly beans, like a handful of, you know. And real candied apples. That's right. With or without razors. (laughs) (laughs) Now, part of the problem or here for Halloween or for me, even if you're giving away chocolate, especially like that, it's sunny and it can be warm because it is spring. It's not autumn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've had melted chocolate when we were out the front, so we had to change over to a different sort of candy. We have also, um, it's, you can't get the um, atmosphere right because it's still light outside. Yeah. It's like my mother making me wear my coat over my outfit. It's not quite right, <laughs> yeah. but we do our best. We do try to jump scare the kids a bit if we can. Um, actually, it's funny because sometimes we have kids taking pictures in our front yard. Like laying out oh, by okay. the dead body. So at least we've kind of changed it that way. And 
in here, not everyone celebrates it. So, right. so you got to put a little sign out. Sign if you're decorated, you're yeah. in. Or balloons. Yeah, like, like we would have all the stuff and wait for all the kids and they just like walk by. And then I, that one year, and I did it last two years in a row. Yep. So I used to play for the Pirates. Yes. On hockey. And it had the Buccaneer on the front and all that. And uh, so I just got that and stuck it on the mailbox. <laughs> And the kids do. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. okay. Oh, we're in. Because yeah. they work it out. They, yeah. they're, the kids are getting wilier yeah. here. Did I ever tell you a story about the uh, lady that uh, she knocks at the door? She goes, oh, look, you all dressed up for Halloween. You know, she says, oh, uh, what are you going to be? I says, oh, I'm a pirate. She says, a pirate? Oh, who is your buccaneers? She says, oh, no, my <laughs> <laughs> Buck and hat, lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's only taken. Yeah. This, Phil, thank you. <laughs> you are shocking. I love it. Right. Now. Well, he had the little hat on. And I all, and know. It's, it's cute. Could see the ears. Buck and ears. <laughs> I will never hear that word again without thinking of that. But I got very excited. I saw my first Halloween ad on Australian TV this uh-huh. year. Really? It was like a landmark moment. I'm trying to think what it was about. I can't even think what it was for, but hopefully I see it again and I will remember. So I think it's coming in. We have less kids coming over yeah. to um, to the house without costumes because if they do, I send them home. Mm-hmm. It's like you have candy, but you got to earn it. Yeah. And then we got memories. Yes. So you got your dad coming over to call the, the and, pumpkin. And dad was a Halloween Master, where he, he was at a good night because he was a cop. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is what I got from what. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this and this. <laughs> and then when he retired, he would do. Okay, so we had the plain old pumpkins with the triangles, you know, jack o' lanterns, yeah. right? And then about twenty years ago, they started getting fancier with the yeah. carving. Well, Dad was ahead of the curve because he used to be a wood carver. He made beautiful wow. birds and things. Yeah. So he would spend like hours making these intricate designs on many pumpkins. Wow. Some of them he had grown. He had a pumpkin contest, pumpkin growing contest with the neighbor. Yeah. They cheated. I mean, the closest we ever came, we used to get the water paint and paint the pumpkins because I we never, we never excelled at carving anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, the trick is the one carving trick I will tell you, I learned from my dad as well. And I'm sure my mom um, is, you know, you cut out the top don't do a whole circle. You yeah. do a circle with a notch, like so go up to make a little rectangle okay. because when it gets old, it'll drop in. Yeah. So that bit you can put it back in and it won't fall through. And yeah, I just, it's nothing, it's it's good to see the kids here because they run around kind of like we used to more so. And, you know, you see groups, you'll get nothing, you'll get 20. You'll get nothing, you'll get, you know, 10. Sometimes yeah. you see them around. We've had some wily ones change their costume, but it's the same kid. Mm. It's like, didn't I deal with you an hour ago? <laughs> That's all right. You earned it then. Yeah. So that that is our, our Halloween sort of love story, I think. Okay. So, well, in that segment... And, and all the things we talked about. Boy, we talked about a lot. We did. And I you thought know. we covered it well last yeah. year. It's how to be safe and candy corn and the Celtics and Stringy Jack. and Not the, the, not the basketball team, though. The, <laughs> uh, the Celtics. Team. Oh, not the Celtics. Not the Celtics. Celtics. No, later. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, so we'll be right back with uh, the Ripper Recipe Roundup. Just <laughs> one. So, we're going to tie things up right now, yep. and we'll start off with Barbara telling us where we are. Now, if you want to come down and visit us, we are at 67 to 73 Cochran's Road, Moorabbin. We are open. Now, we've got late night shopping happening again on Friday night. Oh, so, yay. So, Monday through Thursday, we are 10 to 5. Friday, 10 to 8. Saturday, 10 to 5. And Sunday, 11 to 5. And don't forget, if you're uh, buying online and you're listening to this or yep. do a click and collect, don't forget the uh, the code of the week for October is play ball. That is it. Remember and the World Series. That's it, because we won't be watching it. Uh, <laughs> subscribe to the podcast if you would be so kind. Share and send, if you like and send us an email at podcast at usafoods.com.au. Okay, and that's how we get on to the listener's mail. Yes. And this week we have 
We have two emails and we've I've also had a lovely chat with a lady that we mentioned the other week. So Muffy, who we talked to or we answered her email last week, um, she had a correction for us, Phil, because I know we grasp at straws often. And I said, thank you very much. Um, so we were talking about the two little squirrels that go, after you. No, after you. And we oh, thought, you go first. You yeah, tell them about this. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought that they were Chippendale, and to quote here the email, they were the Goofy Gophers and first appeared in 1947 Warner Brothers cartoons. They didn't actually have their own names until the 60s when they were eventually called Mac and Tosh in the Bugs Bunny shows. She's a fan of, of Warner Brothers. And we talked Weren't about- Weren't we all? We, yes, we were. And uh, back to mustard popcorn. Mm-hmm. She's thinking her mom has an idea with Dolores- Dolores puts mustard on popcorn and mixes it, right? right? So she was talking to her mom, and she thought about a dusting of mustard powder Yeah, they and call it mustard powder, but yeah. it's usually hot. Yeah, so we maybe just play with that. Now, I was going to do it during the game, and I'm sorry, Muffy, I didn't because I was watching – people lose yeah. um so that is muffy thank you very much and please if we mucked up anything tell us about it happy to correct it and we've got a um a listener uh helen o'boyle here is a kick i loved it's, yep. a, it's a bit of a long email so i'm just going to read some bits and pieces it's only and, two pages only, <laughs> <laughs> and um we've got some questions for you yeah, yeah for me yeah for you because oh, you, no you go first yeah <laughs> Shut up. Uh, after you. No, you. Mac, <laughs> shush. I'll be tosh. Okay. So she said, hi, I enjoyed the podcast. I am too a fan of fast casual chain restaurants and miss them here. Sure, some are consistently mediocre, but some offer a reliable comfort food that can be pretty decent. When traveling around the U.S., I like to go to chain restaurants unless there's a particularly noteworthy independent place nearby because I know I'll enjoy the food. Mm-hmm. which is, it's true. We've talked about that. So she went to them, many of them in the 90s and 2000s, and she asked, we were talking about Boston Boston Market. Right. Um, so we, she's just correcting, because it used to be Boston Chicken originally. Yeah, that's what they're famous for, making a chicken. And then we had to talk about, she talked about the U.S. also had some Lone Star franchises. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was one in a Westfield shopping town, and she just said how funny is Westfield came over and took the name Mall off everything and called it Shopping Town. Oh, which I didn't know so. everyone had, well, yeah. So everyone's just like, but it's the mall, not the Shopping Town. Yeah. Like, why are you a calling generic that? Name, yeah. yeah, and she also knew that Australia had some outback steakhouses as well. So um, America had some out. Well, no, Australia. There were Australia, a couple in here. Have, why? I don't know. To get the blooming onions. That's right. <laughs> but she ended up getting a really terrible case of food poisoning. So I'm glad I didn't go. <laughs> I'm sorry she had the food poisoning. Um, she lived in New Jersey for a while, so she didn't have what to exit? go to- What What exit? I don't <laughs> she didn't put that down. Helen, what exit? Come okay. back to me, please. <laughs> we didn't mention the California pizza, pizza kitchen. I missed it. Um when I was here, I've, t- I've told her about. So when I went home, it was just open. And then when I went back, it had closed in my area. But she used to work for Microsoft. And she used to go into her local one late at night, like 9.20. Mm-hmm. And they knew her so well, she'd be tired. And they go, she just just bring me something. And they'd fix what she wanted. They knew what she wanted to drink, big Easy. jug of iced tea. And then sometimes they go, you just let yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> you and know, so, go to like the dog and behind some you. restaurants become f- family like that. Yes. And, um, you know, people watching in the bar she talked about. And she also ended up being in two different places. In Hawaii, she ran into someone at the California Pizza Kitchen in the mall there. And he it was someone she knew from there. He got her her special meal that she uh, had just special for her and yeah. a jug of, jug of unsweetened yeah. iced tea. And then... Uh, later on, she went to another one yeah. in another area, and it's the same thing. They knew who she yeah. was. It was like – They had a picture, you know, like in the back, but to show you how, how to make everything and prepare yeah. Her photo is much That's it. So, so she had this thing called broccoli and sun-dried. So it used to be pasta, broccoli, sun-dried tomatoes, and chicken. Yeah. And she goes, I must have been doing some carb thing. So I said, no pasta. But that's what he brought her because he remembered oh. from way back when. Oh. And um, so she also said she's got two suggestions. Um, Cajun's Choice Blackened Seasoning. There's not a better spice, spice mix for blackened fish. You mm. should consider it. And Anderson's Hard Pretzels. So Ooh. they're like the Snyder's, but she said she likes them better. Yeah. Um, Remember those from California. Yeah. So well, she, there was Anderson's uh, 
Anderson, pea soup. Anderson's. Pea soup, yeah. So she said, I don't know she, if it's the same Anderson. I don't know if it is too, but she would really like to get those in. And um, she <laughs> she's bought a couple when we've had the checks mix, the one ounce ones on special. Yeah. She's bought a couple of, of oh, the cartons. Right. And she said, now she's, she can't part from the boxes because she uses them for work for home paperwork, but she keeps it. They're teasing her <laughs> with the with the taste of it's beautiful. like Halloween. Come here, come here, come here. you can have it. So that is our listener feedback. And I talked to Chrissy about pickles this week. We had she was someone that asked about wholesale accounts. Yeah, we answered her question, and then we chatted yesterday. Um, sorry, Thursday about her pickle choices. So she's buying some Mount Olive. Oh, <laughs> here we go. I still like Bubba's. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to do uh, a new segment, mm -hmm. the personal best. Yes, here we go. The, <laughs> the dog and Phil. Okay, and so I get to choose the product this week. Your turn. Yes. Yeah. So it's a generic product because we have it a, a different, a few different names. Mm -hmm. But celery salt is amazing, isn't it? It is. I use celery salt now. That's like my go-to seasoning now. I know mm -hmm. you use the uh, the Goya. Yes. Okay. There's probably celery ground so, up in that probably, too. Probably, yeah. It. But because it, it, you know, if you need something that adds salt, but it also adds a, you know, a nice flavor with the celery and it just makes things more robust. Mm -hmm. So I use it on like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the pizza king now. Yes, you are. Okay. So I make my sauce for pizza very simple so i get passata mm -hmm. i get some dry because i'm too lazy to, to crush up uh <laughs> garlic so i use dried garlic right. you know the granular one put yep. that in first some olive oil let that sit so it soaks up into the garlic then i put the passata and then i stir it around it some oregano or oregano don't you dare <laughs> yeah. this is a safe space for oh, okay thank oregano, you oregano basil oregano. and um and then i put some celery salt. So that's how I get the salt into it, but also gives it that nice little fragrance mm. into it. And it's beautiful. It is a really, it's one of those things you go, something tastes different. It's good, but I don't know what it is. And yeah. it's often. Yeah. And, and now like anything that I need to flavor, like it needs a little bit of salt. I'll hit, the, hit it with the celery salt, you know, avocado, a little bit of celery salt. Oh yeah. That would be fantastic. Yeah. And if you need to have a Bloody Mary. Celery salt celery to ruin the grass. That's exactly yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Or a bloody Caesar, bloody uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. So bloody there you go. So that's my favorite. So go out, get some celery salt, and then spread it around. That is, it's very good in everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, out of the now we're gonna go. Remember we used to do the nat nosh. Yeah. So now we well, now we reduced it. So Monday. Yes. Okay. Uh, this week is National Vinegar Day, yes. and for some reason you picked vinegar to talk. I about. did. I like a challenge, and I found a good one. This is one of my favorite foods, and my mother used to make it all the time, and Brendan had it last night. I awesome. made it. Beautiful. It is so good. It's um, chicken adobo. So it's Filipino chicken adobo. You can do this mm -hmm. in the um, in the slow cooker, in the pressure cooker, on the stove, however you want it, and you only need a couple ingredients in your house. Yep. So what you do is um, you basically – Make You can throw it all in together or marinate the chicken first. You pick. Fancy as you want. Chicken thighs always, bone in or out, right? And you marinate it in uh, garlic, bay leaves, um, and you want a third cup of vinegar. So plain old under the sink vinegar, like yep. white vinegar, or you can fancy it up with um, rice wine vinegar, which is what I used last night. Third cup of that, third cup of soy sauce. There's about three cloves of garlic you mix in there and you let it sit and then you drain it off. You um, you can brown the um, chicken thighs if you like. You mm -hmm. don't have to. Then once you put it in, you add the um, marinade, you add water, you add um, a whole tablespoon of um, whole um, peppercorns, Ooh. which are really nice to eat later. They mellow out, so you do eat them. Just take out your bay leaves. And then um, you need some additional water. So about one and one quarter cups of water. Um, if anyone wants the exact recipe, just email me and I will give it to you. Um, we're on a quick bit, so I'm not going to read it all out. Yep. And then you let it sit there for about, if you have bone in, I'd go 35 to 40 minutes. Let it just simmer. Um, bone out 25 minutes. Not You don't need to put the top on the pot. And if it's in the slow cooker, stick it in in the morning and just yep. low all day. Now, I had that a long time ago. On, on New Year's Eve, yes. when we used to work at Avering Trust Company, mm -hmm. we worked overnight. 
and uh, we all brought food. We talked about that. Yep. And Fabian, who yep. was Filipino, yep. he made that dish and brought it in. Isn't it? And you just need white rice and some yep. green onions on top. That's mm-hmm. all you need. And it is so good. Yep. And we always have vinegar around the house and soy sauce. So now I get to do, it's National Deviled Egg Day. Yum. Now, I always call deviled eggs, but these ain't deviled eggs, but they're sweet. And now we talked about it before. That's right. Yeah. So we usually make it on uh, Easter. And there was nothing else that was on the that listing of all the things that got got me anything mm-hmm. excited. Now, so it's very simple. So you boil up the eggs, mm-hmm. take the shells off, of course, and then uh-huh. you cut them in half. Take the yolk out. Yep. Mix the yolk with some ricotta, some sugar, uh, very fine sugar. Yep. Just mix it around, and that makes a nice filling. Hey, basically, you could put it back in the egg, and then you could sprinkle some uh, paprika over it. Oh. So that make a devil or Yes. No paprika. No yes. paprika. No pa- <laughs> paprika. Yeah, thank you. I was saying right None of that right. stuff. Yeah, and, you were. And pour honey over it. <gasps> Ooh. And then have that with your black coffee espresso. It's like an egg cheesecake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, sort of, but it's not. But and then you know, so you could have either savory or sweet. Beautiful. And if you do a savory, you could also put like chocolate chips into it. Oh. I have no, yeah. okay. I'm going yeah. to experiment. So it's like the uh, sort of like a an egg cannoli. It is actually. There you go. With and don't forget the cannolis. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next week's show, what are we talking about? Well, we don't know yet. We're no, going to no, make up I, our minds. No, I thought we did. What are we doing? We were going to do condiments. Oh, that's right. Yeah, condiments. I used to have a condiment in uh, <laughs> New York. Yeah. <laughs> I lived in a condo too. Now. I've got the quote that might need an explanation afterward, but Lewis Black, who is mentioned a few times, yeah. all the candy corn that was ever made was made in 1911. So it's still around. It's still the same one. It's like that fruitcake. Yeah, like the fruitcake. Just <laughs> keep on right. circling. No, but I think people do actually eat the, uh, they don't eat fruitcake. But, but they, they will eat that. Yes. yes. And okay. So support your local dentist. Give yes. the kids plenty of sweets. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Doug, if you're listening. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Do we get any Snyders in today? Uh, yeah, we got plenty of Snyders. Now, here's the thing also. So Snyders will be going on special, the, the big sourdough yes. ones in the box. Because they shipped them in uh, short dated or uh, actually yeah, yeah. out of date. But they're still anyway. A pretzel is a stale bread. Yeah, yeah it just, yeah. that's it. It's not it going anywhere. So nothing, yeah. We'll be hearing from Doug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. Right, bye. See ya. <laughs>